Booty Beauty, the YouTuber who's done a lot of terrible things that even today, running away from her past won't do her any favor. Despite how many changes in identity she goes through, or the amends she makes, Foodie Beauty will always remain as the queen of raging. She also has this belief that she's above everyone else ethically and legally, which contributes to her negative behavior. At least that's what most of her followers believe. That's a huge claim that might be true, but it's not to say she's the only one in this community who thinks that way. There are a ton of reaction channels and side characters who are, how do I say it, just as awful and hypocritical as Foodie Beauty. In short, I don't condone people who insert their real life into these random peoples for whatever gains. I think there should be a fine line and it's not to get involved in these YouTubers' real lives. That being said, how did I get to this point where Foodie Beauty gained so much attention? More specifically, negative attention where she has all these followers and channels dedicated to her. For instance, reaction channels who discuss and criticize her every move for content. Just like what I'll be doing, sort of. What does she do to piss people off? But first, let's start with this question. Who even is Foodie Beauty? yourself with a fucking broom, okay? It is ridiculous that an overweight person is told what to do or what they can and cannot eat, what they can and cannot wear on a public platform. What's your point? The amount of views I make versus other people reacting to my content and making it horrible and just being completely fat shaming where it actually affects your mental health, where it actually affects your income. It's just not worth it for me. I don't know. I definitely need a break. One minute later. So I feel really dizzy and I realize how out of shape I am. I feel like no one gets it. Why do I have to be accountable for that? I don't think so. The only person I have to be accountable to is God. You fucking moron. Booty Beauty, also known as Chantal Marie, Chantal Al Rafe, or as of recently, Miriam, started her YouTube channel as a makeup guru. She admitted that the makings of makeup videos are too difficult and wanted to rebrand her channel. You know, work smarter, not harder. Of course, with that motive, Chantal quickly shifted being a makeup guru to being a mukbanger. Around that time in 2017 to 2018-ish was when mukbang videos were skyrocketing, therefore bringing attention to various channels like hers. Two years later, Thanks to the pandemic, Chantal's channel started to rise since everyone was quarantining and had lots of time. Chantal's mukbang videos were unique in the sense where it was similar to what Stephanie Sue's content used to be. Mukbang, true crime, and conspiracies. Chantal glammed herself talking about stories while enjoying a delicious, yummy meal. The two genre, mukbangs and true crimes, were an interesting mix that brought attention to those who were curious, a lot of being positive and some being negative attention. That's why in 2019, Chantal got into her first somewhat big scandal when BuzzFeed wrote an article called a YouTuber's Halloween themed food video about a mass suicide is causing a debate online. The article, written by Tanya Chen on October 30th, 2019, talked about a Canadian woman on YouTube failing to recognize how offensive and how sensitive it is to show a crime scene photo while eating her food. If you know, you know, but the title says it all. She was doing her true crime mukbang videos and was very ignorant, very inconsiderate of her viewers without a proper trigger warning which caused an uproar. The video was in poor taste and everyone can agree it was stupid of her to do so, but it also showed how unaware she can be. Straight away, Chantal has always been a troublemaker on YouTube, always saying the wrong things and doing things that triggers people. It's as if she wanted or wants media attention or coverage whether it's good or bad. It made me wonder how it got to this stage so I did a little bit of digging on her childhood just to trace back at any potential reason why she turned out the way she did. I know she talks about her past in various videos, anything mentioned she has told to the public or is basic knowledge if you're a regular viewer. However, 
Because Chantal is known to lie about her stories a lot, anything mentioned about her childhood might not even be true. Just keep that in mind. Let's take a quick look into her childhood. Chantal was born to a teen mom in 1984. Initially, her mom wanted to keep Chantal as means to persuade the baby daddy to stay. It was told that her parents did not get along and at the end, she was raised by her single mother. As a young child, the mom, who was struggling mentally, would drop Chantal off at her grandma's, unable to be emotionally and physically there for Chantal. Despite being raised by a single parent, she described her young self as spoiled getting whatever she wanted, such as food. From what it seemed, she was a spoiled child indeed, but also a lonely one. It wasn't long after Chantal's mom rekindled and gave birth to another child. It was told by Chantal herself that she's a bit of a jealous older sibling, seeing that her sister had both parents present while she was raised by a single mom who was allegedly neglectful. I think when Chantal gave this piece of information out there, she wanted to warn her audience that she may or may not have daddy issues, or both, which in a way may be her excuse for the toxic relationships she will get into. It's also speculated that her sister has always been viewed as the better sister, which wouldn't be news since sibling rivalry and constant comparison is common in a household, a toxic household actually, because due to that, it probably caused a long-term adverse effect on Chantal, resenting her sister, if that's even true. The more you think about her past, the sadder it gets, like the struggles of being compared to a sibling. On top of that, Chantal's childhood consisted of her getting tossed in group home, which didn't help her mentally. There's just so much lore that I can't even go into depth with it or else this video would be a bit too lengthy. But you get the gist, her childhood sucked, but that does not excuse her present behavior. Fast forward to the first known relationship. During her young adult years, Chantal was in a relationship with a person she calls Pete's. They both met in school and were roommates before starting a romantic relationship when Chantal pushed the idea onto him. The two dated for half a decade until she made the smart move to cheat on Pete's for some unknown reason. Maybe Pete's was too boring or it could be the unresolved issues because cheating would be a repeating event in her life. Apparently, Pete's was afraid that she would leave him and even negotiated that it be an open relationship but that didn't fall through. We were a couple in like 2004, 2005. You dumped me in 2011. Oh, you remember the year? Yeah, because 2011 was an eventful year for me. <clears throat> Why? You broke up with me and I lost my job and had to move back in with my mom. Oh, yeah. Chantal left Pete's for a man named Milan, who people in Gora world know as BB. In 2016, she started her YouTube channel, like mentioned earlier, as a makeup guru. Although things ended badly between Chantal and Pete's, they remained close and did consider each other best friends. Up until recently when Pete's claimed they haven't been keeping in touch, but that's not until way later into the story. Again, her past mukbangs were unique as she would put effort into her research, talking about creepy pasta stories and true crime. 2017 through 2018 was also the time where she tried to document her weight loss journey, but it didn't really go through or go anywhere, so I can't say much about it. Although, people today still hold her on a level where they expect her to continue her journey for health reasons because the majority in her community, whether they like her or not, wish her good health. In 2018, she would at times feature her long-term boyfriend, BB, in her videos even though he wasn't much of a talker or entertainer. However, the times people saw him on camera, his presence contributed something to her content. His demeanor and character was the polar opposite of Chantal, someone who came across as cool-headed and at times looked like he's done with her BS. In other words, BB looked bored being in Chantal's video and that itself is the entertainment. People speculated that the relationship were crumbling and it was time for BB to check out since he was a man of dreams. BB is a Muslim man 
from Senegal, West Africa. So culturally, both of them are very different. BB was also at the age where he wanted to start a family with Chantal, even to the point where he forgave her for cheating after one year of being together. I told you cheating would be an occurring event. I guess that shows how set on starting a family with Chantal, and it shows a lot about BB. To forgive someone for cheating is a powerful move. I had an affair on BB. Actually, I had a couple affairs on BB. It's not funny. I feel like an asshole and he's gonna hate me. I was a piece of shit. And he was ignoring me a lot. <sighs> you don't know. You only know I had sex with the Jamaican guy with the 16 inch wiener. You don't know about Diego and you don't know about James Charles. Sadly, Due to complications and health reasons, Chantal is unable to have kids, which kind of worked in her favor though because she voiced multiple times in the past that she didn't like or want any kids. On YouTube, she would paint their relationship full of lust but would put glimpses of truths into it. On camera, the two lacked chemistry despite how happy she told the world they were together. They were even raising two cats at that time, Sam and BBJ. Some people and reaction channels speculated that Chantal would neglect her cats while she prioritized using money for fast food which affected Bibi's income. Unfortunately, Bibi decided to call things after 7 years of being together, marking a new era on the Foodie Beauty channel. Yes, that was only the beginning of Chantal's disastrous events with men and her bad relationship with her audience. I really don't have an opinion on Bibi and Chantal's relationship as it's quite outdated and I don't care to form any of my own thoughts. However, I do find it silly that people always speculate on a relationship, whether it's a loveless one or not, but I don't blame them. Chantal makes it very obvious by over explaining her relationship and is always on the defense about it. That makes me believe that something is going on. After the breakup, Chantal went on a search for another apartment and decided to move in with Pete's, who she would make her own personal slave. Pete's was mainly there to keep her company and to get her DoorDash orders, being an enabler. Actually, I think it was more than that. Chantal was struggling to rent an apartment, so she needed Pete's to help her get an apartment. Both were not meant to be roommates. Let's just get that out of the way. Since he was sometimes blindsided by how self-destructive Chantal was. The constant takeouts and barely moving an inch to grab her DoorDash was getting out of hand and people saw it as a bad sign and started to call her out. The two would do videos together as best friends and Pete's even started a YouTube channel where he would play video games and would livestream. His most famous livestream moments are him raging at his chat like a ticking time bomb which people love to see. Straight up blocking you because you're f***ing and you're getting on my f***ing nerves. Can we just have a casual like, conversation? Apparently not, because people are being fucking assholes here. You're a prick who's just trying to piss me off. So just fuck off, you stupid fucking shitty troll. Go fuck yourself with a fucking broom, okay? It was apparent at this time that Chantal's community loved to bait her and Pete into raging online, which made them look problematic. But problematic equals more views. Chantal would continue her usual mukbang storytime videos and would live stream as well. Daily live stream would be a savior in her career in a sense where she would get tons of donation and that's how she gets more rich. However, it would also be the downfall for Chantal, pretty much a double-edged sword since Chantal can slip up on live stream and say things that are meant to be kept to herself, unable to edit things out. This was also the time where more reaction channels came to light talking about Chantal's problematic behavior, especially if we fast forward where the pandemic gave birth to a new set of reaction channels. Chantal even threatened some of these channels and went on a striking spree, which made her look like a bloodthirsty villain. Although. I think it's completely fair to strike the ones who are not transformative and she has the right to do so, but there are consequences for striking channels in the Chantalverse. Because of that, it fueled the fire even more, making her list of public enemies longer than a CVS receipt. If I'm completely honest, I would not be surprised if I get into that list after making this video, but she did say all attention is good attention, so I might be safe. 
Jordan's Zachary Michael, which I believe was initially the first to start reacting to Foodie Beauty, boosted her channel. That's when Foodie Beauty and Amberlynn Reed crossed path, when reaction channels started to group the two into the verse girl world. Since her channel was getting attraction even more and 2019 through 2020, it was only natural that she was sponsored by The Coldest Water, a company selling water bottles. The company would also sponsor YouTubers outside of mukbangers. Since Chantal despised reaction channels so much, she explained that she will no longer work for the coldest water. Since Chantal was having drama behind the scenes with reaction channels, the coldest water retracted their sponsorships. Therefore, Chantal wrote in anger. So coldest water sent me a pissy email because they say I am bullying people. LMAO, but support and sponsor bullies. Just pissed that I decided to no longer work with them. Do not support coldest. They are overpriced anyways. This is a problem in that they are accusing a person who is being tormented every day. I have been doxxed. My family has been doxxed. I have several channels and forums bullying me every day and then coldest water wants to pull this crap. Horrible company. Who have I bullied? Ridiculous. Just like when you listen to the haters and cancel my sponsorship the first time, now you pull this crap? Shows what an unprofessional company you are. To further Chantal's question of who have I bullied, she would later on answer her question when she too would get into more dramas with other people. Therefore, being the bully herself. Chantal would continue to beef with other people on YouTube. One huge instance I can think of right now is Chantal threatening Charlie Gold, another reaction channel, and also made racist microaggressive remarks on her. I believe this is who she really is, actually. Chantal found a public report on Charlie Gold's arrest and mugshot, to which Chantal started to generalize black women from what I understood. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy that she's getting some exposure as a person. Like, people are starting to criticize her. Because you know what? The funny thing is about these channels is that they can give their opinion and criticize all day long other people. But the minute they get it back, they go off. Because to me, it's just ridiculous. It's just absolutely ridiculous. Even before people started picking on me or making me the subject of their videos, I, I advocated for Amberlynn because I think that her treatment's not fair. But I can tell I know a criminal when I see one. <laughs> Charlie Cole, stop playing the race card. Charlie Cole, you'll be going right back to the slammer where you belong. And another mugshot will be circulating. Seriously, you don't want to f with me. All in all, Chantel made plenty of microaggressive comments about others in the past. On top of that, she has a history of sexualizing POC men as well. To throw in other problematic behaviors during this time, she would also offend the LGBTQ plus communities and would make ableist remarks. So there's that. Remember, she's in her late 30s, but that's okay because she was raised in Cornwall, Canada after all, which according to Chantel, is an uncultured little town. So she gets a pass, right? Other than that, not much was happening in her life in 2020, only the repetitive drama with reaction channels and people in her little circle. But with Nicholas, it's more just he's he's from another country, but at the same time, he, it's it, it's humorous banter. Um, he's so cute. Like everything he says, I am just find myself looking at him and going, you're so cute. And then after I talk and I would say something like he would want me to talk to him like in French and I did. And he's like, you're just so cute. And like, we just couldn't keep our hands off each other naturally. You ever meet somebody from Tinder or like, that's what scares me about meeting is the awkwardness. You meet somebody in person and you, you, you get the ick. You're just like, oh, fuck, what do I do? You know, like, it's so awkward. And that didn't happen with him. That didn't happen with him. It was just so natural, the attraction and... I love spending time with him. Heading into 2021, things got a bit spicier when Chantal tried to go into the dating scene again, but was self-conscious since she's getting older. On top of that, balding. In March of 2021, she did have a couple of options though, but her eyes were keen on one specific person who she referred to as the Egyptian guy, protecting his identity. Chantal admitted he was not her type, but something about him was alluring, which she liked. Nothing wrong with a little bit of mystery. It makes things enticing. She would later refer to this guy as Dom, for obvious reason, the power imbalances, saying how Dom was a controlling person, yet very clingy. It was apparent from the start that Chantal was being a sugar mommy, which wouldn't be the last. 
Since she never felt like a guy was never really into her before, she thought Dom was charming in that way for being clingy. On top of that, they were doing hard substances together which I could imagine intensified their relationship, having a closer connection. So it was like two nights, like not every single night that I was with him we did hard stuff. It was like the one night and then like another night was like the bad, bad, bad night where we just did like everything. <laughs> it's not funny, but... And after I did it, I was like, oh my god, I cannot believe I did all this stuff. Although, for the majority, Chantal started to put this Dom dude on a pedestal, dismissing his red flags. She would explain how he would demand sex even when she refuses, which all in itself is a great indicator to head out the door. On top of that, this Dom dude was broke when they first met, and Chantal willingly handed him everything when he asked. Of course, being a pleaser, she would buy him groceries, pay his rent, pay the phone bills, and more throughout their relationship, which is crazy that she's willing to go out to that extent just to pretty much buy his affection. I get there are instances where one partner has to pull through, but pretty obvious that he was using her financially. Yes, by now we know Dom is not a great person, and Chantal knew from the start, but for some reason, she thought it would get better continuing the relationship where things would get even more toxic. She was in paradise and was head over heels for this man. And the both continued to see each other even when her audience told her not to further the relationship. It got so bad to the point where Chantal revealed that she almost OD'd when she took three things at once with him. It made me like really sick. Like I was sick like for like two days like in bed like... That's not why I decided to end things with him. It was just, uh, it was like a mixture. Like, I don't even want to say it. I'm so ashamed of it. Like, I am ashamed. Like, I told Pete's and he's like, you're better than that. You're not white trash. I'm like, I am white trash. Her audience were worried for her health and safety since they saw Dom as a bad influence and a shitty person overall. Of course, Chantal refused to listen and turned a blind eye like always. June of 2021, Chantal went on YouTube to confess that she's addicted to cocaine. I don't know how to say what I'm about to say, but I don't think it's something, I, it's not something I was gonna talk about. I just feel really alone. And I, not that I don't know what to do, it's just, I'm, I think I'm in like denial. I'm so sorry. Oh my God, I need Kleenex, hold on. <laughs> Nothing to do with Dom. I'm not seeing him anymore. This is um, completely just me right now. I'm pretty sure. That I'm addicted to <sighs> this video showed her being vulnerable, more open than usual, and to be completely honest, anyone who watches the clip of her bawling her eyes out, I think we can empathize regardless if we struggle or not. I think it's only human. I will give it to her. It must have been hard to accept the fact that she's addicted and it takes a lot of courage to open up to random strangers online. However, what was odd to me was for her to go on live and cry about her issues. She actually bragged about doing this stuff to her viewers and then faced the consequences for continuing to abuse it. Not to victim shame though, she's an adult making adult decisions. So what does she expect? I think sometimes Chantal shares too much of her personal life online and that's how I'm going to end that conversation. Around this time, Chantal had complications with Dom and was not on speaking terms with him since they were on and off behind the scenes. It was obvious the two were having disagreements as Chantal started to air out some stuff about him, throwing shade. I, I'm done. I'm like, you can't even respect me enough to think of me. Like, you're not thinking of me if you're not thinking of me to call me back. I feel like he doesn't really, really want to see me as much as I want to see him. A couple of weeks later, Dom's identity was revealed. A man named Natter. They were on and off, returning back to each other despite how toxic they can get with each other. Hence why I'm titling this video, Toxic Relationships. Chantal even helped launch Natter, his own YouTube channel, where he would do cooking videos, pretending to be a chef. She was so confident that they were going to work things out and be the next it couple that she was willing to cross pollinate her subscribers onto his channel but things got worse the longer they stayed together in october 2021 five months into their relationship she went and visited natter who was hours away from cornwall and found him lying in bed with an oddly shaped 
looking eggplant. That resulted in her getting tested at the clinic. After that, she received a call informing that she tested positive for STD. Frantic, Chantal made a community post on YouTube asking anyone for help. She wrote, I have gonorrhea. The clinic called. They swabbed my throat and it came back positive for STD. I have a lot of mixed emotions. I am going to be taking an antibiotic. Just one pill, apparently. I feel confused. I'm not sure where this came from. He denies all any cheating, and I know I didn't, and without proof, what can I do? The two were just not compatible, and I believe Chantel knew. That's why she was in denial for a bit, trying to fight for their relationship. She claimed it may be because of her lack of hygiene, resulting in an STD. She explained that she needed to wash better down there, and that no cheating was involved. Or, it could be just him, I don't know. Despite that, they continued to see each other. I know there's just so much toxicity in this story. Fast forward, one day, Chantal went over to Natter's after she had allegedly sent him money for a gambling app he played. Chantal felt uneasy as his mood shifted to being aggressive, but she brushed it off thinking he was annoyed for losing all of the gambling money. Uh. That day, they both had intercourse. Sounds like an alright night until Natter threatened Chantal, grabbing her face and physically assaulting her. After that, he ended up asleep and she snuck out the door quietly in fear. He even at the hotel, whenever he hit me and I said, are you fucking kidding me? Like I started crying. I was like, are you kidding me? This is why you're going to jail. And he's like, huh? Jail? And he, he got mad at me that I was, that I charged him. On a live stream, Chantal revealed that someone in her community called the cops on Natter and he apparently had to serve probation, which he was not pleased about. Despite the physical abuse she endured, she still felt love for this man, which made things worse. That wasn't the only time Natter showed aggression towards Chantal. There's this one instance where she was driving Natter home as he was yelling at her, getting up in her space, which caused her to lose control over the wheels, causing a collision. No one died, don't worry. But that didn't stop her from seeing him. Chantal went on live stream and debated with her audience if she should throw her life away to live with this man who she so desperately wanted. Her audience got worried and had a gut feeling that things could end badly for Chantal, just like how things ended with Natter's ex. The ex-girlfriend got stabbed by him, making him a criminal who attempted that same fate could have happened to Chantel if we're being real, since he can't control his anger, making him a dangerous person to be around. All of that aside, Chantel was willing to take the risk to even protect his image, keeping his dark secrets because she was that in love with him. I know, crazy shit. Like, how are these people even real? It's like watching a reality TV show, but more intense. He was blocking the doorway from her, him leaving. She was holding his arms back or holding him back and or something like that and then i don't know he said he stabbed him in the arm just to get away towards the end of their relationship she bought natter a new laptop that everyone in this community talks about to this day i'm pretty sure the laptop was a bribe or a prize i'm not really sure but according to multiple sources chantal bought natter a laptop as a Thank you for eating my peach. If you think about it, it's pretty sad and further adds onto the stigma that she's desperate to buy love. Nothing wrong with being a love bomber, but it was clear from the get-go that the laptop was an attempt to secure Natter around her fingers. And what was his response? He didn't really care much about her, but just because Chantal showered him with expensive gifts doesn't automatically make him adore her. He's not obligated to like her just because she showers him with presents, but it does show how much of a douche he is. In the end, after all the ups and downs, Natter decided to leave Chantal. This marked the downfall of Chantal, but also the rise of the Foodie Beauty channel, if that makes sense. Since her channel grew with the help of this Natter drama, the end of this saga made her into an even worse person than she already was in her previous years. Can you, like, actually f believe the nerve of this guy, like, to be- to have some bullshit reason to not want to be my boyfriend, like, because I live with Pete's, and he ha probably f this friend of his tonight, messages me and says, no, is she sleeping over? No, f 
Oh, really? Really? And pays 200 to come and see you? You fucking lying piece of shit. She really thought they were going to be endgame, but it all went to fire when a woman, Dee Dee, came around. Natter jumped into another relationship with Dee Dee, who was rumored to be a viewer of Chantal. Even worse, a paying channel member of the Foodie Beauty channel. Natter was apparently messaging a ton of women and Dee Dee happened to be one of them. The two met and started a romantic relationship but lied to Chantal and told the story that they are just childhood friends but no one bought it and so did she. Anyway, like, I try calling you. I try calling him. And I sent, even sent you a message, Dee Dee, and you f ignore it. Like, you have no, you don't even understand what, like, how I'm upset. Like, like, you don't see how he's treating me? Like, I know you're brought into this, but like, what the f Like, But listen, Chantal was devastated, although a part of her was still hopeful for Natter's attention that she, at one point, willingly had a threesome with Natter and Dee Dee. All this is now documented. Everything is done. I'm not doing this again. I she would go on live stream and later discuss that she went downtown on Dee Dee and that that was her biggest regret. But hey, Keep your enemies close. I went to your house and we all had a threesome and it was disgusting and I want to, I wanted to friggin' end my life after. Dee Dee stinks. She's disgusting. She has pissy pussy. He's homophobic. He's so gross. The fish stick. I don't know why I ever. Fucking fish stick? He's going to try OnlyFans now. Watch. They will love my dick. To see how beautiful it is. As Chantal predicted, Nader would do OnlyFans, but he wouldn't be the only one. Chantal would later go into the sex work as well. More power to her though, but it's so funny considering she only did it out of spite in my opinion lol. Since YouTube didn't a platform Nader's channel, Chantal wanted to shift her income doing OF as means to not work for YouTube. It was a short-lived period since she doesn't do OF anymore, so don't even think about looking for her link you nasties. Doesn't it bother you at all that I have the power to destroy you in a second? I cannot, like I need to get him off of this platform. I cannot be on this platform with him. I will leave YouTube. I hate him so much. I will seriously go full time to OnlyFans. I don't care. I just want him gone. I want him gone. He's, He's disgusting. disgusting. He's, He's a dangerous, dangerous person, person and, and needs to be behind bars. bars. Feeling betrayed, she started to hold a grudge on Natter and Dee Dee. She would go on a live stream and explain how horrible of a person he is and how over it she is on his bullshit. Even saying all of that, Chantal would also purposefully leave her belongings at his place as an excuse to come back to talk to him. She even streamed the event of her harassing Natter, which he refused to have any contact with her. She had no boundaries and no self-respect by shoving herself into a person's life, yet alone someone who doesn't even want her. Do you love me? Do you, do you love me? Do you love me? Like, you hung up on me and you don't even give a f about my feelings. That's the whole problem. You never did. There were also instances where Chantal would debate if she should press charges, but then pulled back talking about wanting to have sex with him again which that itself is so toxic and should have been her reason to stop. Fuck you, Mayo Chin. Go fucking lick a dick. <sighs> like, I did drop the charges. They Like, I told you the whole story. Like, basically, Didi called me on the way there. You need to change your story and make it seem like... You know, if you say that it happened, but you're, you, you love him and you want the charges dropped, they're not going to follow that. I won't be sleeping with him anymore because he doesn't apologize to me for being mean to me. And until he apologized to me, I will not be seeing him ever again. You know why? Because he's loving this, because he's a narcissist. You're going to be in jail for fucking sexual assault at the end of the month. You disgusting piece of shit loser. You don't even, shouldn't even be on this platform. I don't drive high, you stupid asshole. Prove it. 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 You should not even be on this platform. You know what pisses me off? I see what he's doing, and people are either falling for it or trying to fucking bait me to rage. And there she goes taking the bait every time. All of the people in his chat, 150 of them, are pieces of shit. They're all harem, old, desperate, ugly, fuck stupid women your little plan i don't care because here's what here's the thing i'm gonna go on living my life plowing men who don't use me or abuse me and are way hotter than you and that are you're a dumb bitch too natter not wanting chantal to get her moment leaked a photo of her kissing his feet out of spite or just out of pettiness such a dick move but at the same time very funny because chantal loves to tell people to kiss her feet as an insult and i just think it's ironic 
Didi also made a post and claimed that throughout 2022, Chantal was obsessing over Natter behind the scenes, despite telling her followers that she's over him. Didi wrote, I have been noticing some reaction channels insinuating that there might be a chance that Natter and Chantal are still in cahoots in regards to the so-called drama these days. I can assure you gajillion percent that Natter has not spoken to Chins since last summer when we called the police and had a harassment report filed on her. This is facts, 100%. As I said in my previous post, Chins was blowing up his phone for most of the year in 2022. She wanted to see Natter no matter what, but also wanted to keep her Beezers happy by continuing to lie to them, pretending that she is done with him. She even went as far as raging and blocking them when they called her out on some inconsistencies. And all that time, they were right. But we know Chantal, she does no wrong. Everyone else is always at fault. And how dare you question her, right? She wanted to make sure she still keeps her subs and that her income will not be affected. So she lied constantly and she is still lying to this day. But this time, it is out of jealousy and revenge. She wants all of her beezers to hate and despise Natter and I. So once again, to all reaction channels out there speculating, stop these rumors. No cahooting going on between Natter and Chins at all. She wishes. LOL. Smiley face. Disregarding how anyone feels about Dee Dee, what she said in that post is the truth. I believe her and I can 100% see Chantel continuing to push a relationship onto Natter behind the scenes. It's on theme and I definitely see it as canon. Apparently, Natter moved to Montreal with Dee Dee and they both have their own storyline that gets super wonky and crazy, but I don't want to get into it since it involves a lot of abuse and elderly abuse allegations. Also, it's important to mention Chantal doxed Dee Dee's elderly mother's nursing home and encouraged people to harass this poor lady. That isn't the only time Chantal will dox people though, and if you know, you know. After the breakup with Natter, this was when Chantal went berserk. She would go livestream, drunk, raging about nonsense, and screaming about Natter and Dee Dee, calling them names. Dee Dee, you were second choice. He was gonna come to f Windsor. Shut your ugly f***ing mouth up, bitch. Shut up. Shut up or I'm driving there right the f*** now. I will drive there right the f*** now. Shut up. Chantal looks like the Kool-Aid man. Remember that? People literally think you're trans and you're going to come for me? Nothing wrong with being trans if you're trans. All right, what else here? Natter and Didi will snipe stream and talk smack back, causing this whole drama online. This whole love triangle probably earned Chantal thousands, so my guess is she was sort of playing along with it, entertaining yet mind-blowing that these people exist. After all the stories and dirt Chantal aired out on Natter, Amberlynn Reed started to hate on Natter as well because she wanted to be a good ally. However, Amber went onto Natter's livestream and told him how sorry she is for calling him a narcissist and other bad things. Chantal saw that and being friends with Amber, she felt betrayed and cut her off like many of her relationships, calling Amber a boring two-faced friend. What she did was so weird to me that I just, I can't, I, I, I now see, like for me her mask has slipped and I see what people call her a pathological liar. Finally, we're at the timeline where it's most important in terms of who Chantal really is and perhaps the most talked about event in the Chantalverse or gore world, whatever. To those who keep up with Chantal and are still watching, you already know what's going to go down. Around this time, Chantal had just lost her YouTube channel due to violation and created a second channel. It wasn't long until she got her channel back soon after. She then went on to a trip to Cuba in April 2022 for a getaway vacation and splurged, tipping the locals big money, as she should since she claimed to have earned 20k a month during this time. Or at least that's what she made her audience believe. You know what? I give a lot. I'm fucking generous as fuck. Because you know what? These people fucking deserve it. These Latino people who work to slave their fucking ass to serve us fucking old shoe leather or beef because it's what's familiar. Or go out of their way to give us fucking relish on her burger. Chantal tipped the workers pretty well and wanted an ass pat for feeling some type of empathy and sympathy towards the workers for having a rough life in Cuba. She went on YouTube live stream, sitting alone in her dark hotel room, drunk as a skunk, and talked about how much she hated her privileged lifestyle. She also poured her heart out about the people in her life. 
Because no one gives a fuck. No one gives a fuck, bitch. Get on the scale, bitch. Get on the scale. Amber Lynn lost more weight than you will ever lose, bitch. She's hotter than you will ever be, bitch. Get the fuck on the scale and shut the fuck up. That's my thought about Charlie. That was always my problem about Charlie. And you know what? Stay big mad, Putin princess. Putin princess pays your fucking bills and you will always have to live with that notion that I pay your bills. My videos pay your bills. My messiness pays your bills. Bitch. Yeah. Mm, who's winning? Me. Chantal is right though. Her being a total wreck online helps her financially and to those who covers her. So thanks Chantal for taking one for the team. Well, what I really mean is Chantal started to rage at those who did her wrong and once again started to offend multiple people and multiple communities, repeating that same negative behavior, but in bigger format. And here we are. Ooh, ooh, I don't have really should be bigger. <laughs> I don't have ketchup. Ooh. He's not worth the sh literal shit that comes out of my asshole. He's not worth it. Fucking relish. Nobody gives a shit. You're a fucking loser and you let men use you. You're disgusting. You're a fucking disgrace to women. Fuck you, Nana. You're an Egyptian mummy and you look like two Kukataman with fucking neural teeth. You loser. You'll never be nothing. Big fucking deal, you old, white, saggy, bald piece of fuck. I hope people make your life a living hell. I'd rather die than fuck you again, Didi. Actually, fucking you gave me PTSD. How does that make you feel, bitch? Like, what is a gray pussy? What is a gray pussy? It's like sweaty balls. That's what it tastes like. Her fucking vagina tasted like sweaty balls. I'm marrying Renee and he's moving in with me with his son. I need kids and I love Renee. He's fucking hot. He eats me out from behind. He don't care how fat the pussy is. He's not afraid of it. The pieces of crap who bully me on a daily basis. I don't feel bad for me manipulating them. Sorry. <laughs> okay, your pussy is gray. So you know what? Go fuck yourself. I hope you fucking drain every fucking penny. Every fucking penny you have of your and your mother's on fucking matter. You desperate, lonely, short haired, ugly mother fucking cunt. I don't know what kind of drug I was on to fuck his ass, but Jesus Christ. Sweetie, you were doing cocaine, so you knew what drugs you were taking when fucking his ugly ass. Stop pretending you didn't know. And all you have is desperate fucking geriatric gray fishy pussy dee dee and her geriatric mother. It's so sad that that's your existence now. Convincing people that you're a good person by feeding fucking elderly people that you dox who look exactly like your new girlfriend. Bye. Fuck you. The amount of times Chantal brought up Dee Dee's fishy gray pussy makes me think she actually liked it but was covering it up by hating it. LMAO. <laughs> There's always Beezers who replace the fallen Beezers. That's what you don't get. In a way, it's a bit sad and it screams help since, you know, a woman in a drunken state crying in front of her camera talking shit all alone in a foreign country. Yeah, that, that screams help. How's that not embarrassing to go on vacation and then turn on the camera to drink in rage? Although she's not wrong for saying Natter is a piece of shit. That's something the majority of us can agree on. Overall, Chantal showed her true color during her vacation. The Cuba rage made its mark as the most important piece to the Chantal lore as it showed everything we need to know about her. A sad, hateful, spiteful person who needs a hug from someone, but no one's going to. That's why, even today, she tries so hard to cover up her messy past. How would she do it though? Well, her solution is to practice life as a modest woman. Chantal tried to date again, probably because she feels pressured to date someone since she's getting older and needs to settle down. That only means one thing, marriage. That was when a guy from Kuwait magically messaged her at the right timing. Salah al Rafay, who took interest in Chantal, started to message her on a dating app. According to the main source, the Feedy Beauty channel, they messaged back and forth for about a week until the talks of marriage came up. She also started to wear a hijab as she's now a Muslim woman, even though she said in the past that she actually wanted to wear the hijab to cover up her chin, nothing else. As you can see, I purchased my first hijab today. Well, or if there's any message I should say, I want other people because I come on here and I talk a lot of shit and I doubt that 90% of the time people actually listen to what I say. And I want to say, please, please, can we all just stop the hatred 
In addition, Chantal was head over heels because she was told by this man that he was living a luxurious life, talking about a mansion or something. It was probably just Chantal hyping up her man like what she did to Natter. Within two weeks or so, Chantal packed her luggage, left her two cats, Sam and BBJ, behind with Pete's, and flew across the country to expedite her marriage with Salah. Once she landed, people were shocked that the mansion that was talked about was actually a studio apartment. No hate though, but a lot of people started to make fun of her for thinking she was going to live a luxurious lifestyle, but it turned out to be a studio. Chantal was enraged and started saying that people were house shaming her in Salah, or anything of that sort. That was a quick fix though, when Chantal was able to move them into a better apartment with nice windows. But unfortunately, they got doxxed and people started sending complaints about Chantal to the workers in the complex. With that, they had to move again. She also bought Salah a car, which didn't help against the allegations that she's purely just a sugar mama. I guess buying someone a laptop didn't work, so she had to upgrade to a car. Also, what's weird is that Salah has control over their finance, even though it's speculated that she's the breadwinner. I would point out though that Salah did have a perfume company, Beezer Sprays. It was short-lived when people tried to tamper with the business, so I'm not sure what happened to the company afterwards. The two were so in love, despite being complete strangers. Uh, try your right hand. This is the first one, first thought. Brother. <laughs> Which led people to speculate what Salah's motives, perhaps finance, real love, green card? How about Chantal? Why did she move out of Canada so suddenly? Well, for her, she had three years worth of unpaid tax she owes Canada, so she had to make a quick recovery financially in another country where she could live comfortably. She said to herself, not me. Anything from that list above are all hot topics of discussion when it comes to the newlywed. Green card, love, money. I remember when Chantal finally introduced Salah on camera, people were in disbelief that a person like him would settle with a person like her. I guess to people, he's an upgrade in terms of looks in comparison to Natter, but it doesn't take much to one-up him. Don't be fooled though. Salah is a piece of shit who's made a ton of terrible comments about people as time went on. Since Chantal is naturally a hateful person to her audience, kiss my ass. Salah adapted that personality and got very into arguing with the haters or just people in Chantal's community. I will give it to him though. Since he is her husband, it is rule number one to defend the wife, so I see why he feels the need to jump in at times. It's just, the way he would tell people to kill themselves puts a bad taste in my mouth. Don't come here, don't even, don't even chat, don't even talk. Just kill yourself, please. <laughs> Speaking of bad taste, and no, I'm not talking about Dee Dee, Chantal struggled to make friends in Kuwait due to her poor attitude. She shamed a person, the wife of Salah's friend, saying the wife hangs out with men in her apartment. To be more specific, Chantal made it clear that the men were black and insinuated that the hangouts were more than just hanging out. I'll let you decide what she means by that. If that's not a generalization, I don't know what else. But moving on, during her visit to Kuwait, people realized in Pete's livestream that the cats looked unhealthy and dirty. They looked like they're being neglected. This wasn't the first time people accused Chantal and Pete's of neglecting the cats though. She's still fucking alive. See? Look at her. Happy? If you've seen any Feedy Beauty related content on Twitter, Chances are you've seen the hashtag Foodie Beauty Animal Abuser trending all over there. Around that time, hundreds of Foodie Beauty posters got hung around New York City as a way to protest against her. The poster reads, shame on at YouTube for allowing this animal abuser, Chantal aka Foodie Beauty, to stay on their site. What actually caused this was because of some released document on one of Chantal's cat, BBJ's neglect. Like I said, there's so much to cover that the timeline may be out of order, but let's roll back a little bit about Freedy Beauty's arch nemesis.
French fried girl, or FFG, was once a supporter of Chantal. She was just like any other person who supported Chantal in the early days, someone who was worried about her health and well-being, especially during the Natter arc. FFG was so worried about Chantal's safety that she advised her in private to break it off with Natter. Chantal, at that time, would get annoyed at anyone who would speak ill on Natter's name and started to rage and went on a blocking rampage. She ended up doxing FFG's phone number out of malice and because of that, that was the beginning of the ultimate rivalry in Girl World. Booty Beauty vs. French Fried Girl. In my opinion, without FFG, I believe the Chantal verse would go into dust because it was going into shambles already during the end of Natter. Although I mentioned in the beginning that I don't condone those who go into YouTubers' personal life to mess with them, like what FFG did, she did attend a public event Chantal was modeling at called the Fatty Fashion Show, and it actually was intriguing. I thought it was a bit invasive and unnecessary at first, but it was indeed a public event, and Chantal did encourage people to attend, if I recall. Without the help of FFG, we wouldn't have gotten footage of Chantal's last big moment in Canada before she ran to Kuwait. The two ladies, FFG and Chantal, seem to be civil during the live stream, which is the polar opposite of what their online personas are. Both have very loud personality and throw insults at each other constantly online, but when met face to face in person, crickets. My theory is that Chantal is actually a shy, timid, insecure person, which is relatable. I think we're all insecure in our own ways, but she puts this tough person act online as if she will destroy you if she sees you in person. But you're forgetting, FFG, that I met you in person, so I know what you smell like. So anything that smells remotely nice is going to smell foreign to you. I don't blame you. You have, you smell like an ashtray from like, a, an old forgotten ashtray in an abandoned Motel 6. That's what you smell like. To cut her some slack, it also reminds me of everyone on social media just casually putting on an act and faking it till they make it. Kinda like me. Continuing the FFG drama leading up to the cat neglect allegation. Actually, I don't even know if I should call it the cat allegation since the document that FFG showed online is proof that BBJ's nails were overgrowing, curling to her paws. Therefore, she can't retract her nails, causing a health issue. On top of that, with many other health issues, such as the bladder infection, which is serious. And it also shows further that Chantal was definitely neglecting her cats. But setting all of that aside because it gets kind of sad if I talk too much about it. Chantal's friend of 20 plus years, Shannon, apparently leaked some information about Chantal that was not meant to be out in public. This caused a ripple in their relationship and they ultimately ended on bad terms, resulting in FFG befriending Shannon, becoming buddies. Some people think it's probably just out of spite, but who really knows? But the two would work together to expose how vile Chantal is as a person. Now, it's a perfect time to talk about how FFG orchestrated the plan to take BBJ, whom she was going to put down off of Chantal's hand. According to FFG, her brother helped retrieve BBJ without Chantal knowing his identity. After figuring that out, Chantal got angry and started having a breakdown on livestream, and Sam, the other cat, was rehomed after Chantal failed to bring him to Kuwait because bringing a cat across the country can be costly. I have actual, I have, I have receipts of me. I know you all think it's really, really cool to see me like this right now. Right? You're fucking sick. Pleasure and give money to this fucking bitch who literally stole my cat. The BBJ situation is also a topic that is still being talked about today. From what it looked, the majority are thankful that FFG took BBJ in, taking the cat away from Chantal. Filled with rage, Chantal took to her community tab and wrote, BBJ is being taken care of now? You zombies are real dense. First off, you were all lied to about who has the cat. Second, BBJ is wasting away, which is animal abuse. She is emaciated. I will be calling animal control and I encourage you all who actually gave a crap about BBJ to do the same. Truth is, none of you cared about BBJ. You only cared about making me mad and for drama entertainment. What amazing people you are. And don't say I didn't care about her because I chose to rehome her because the person I was talking to lied to me. Sometimes what is best for the animal if sick and you can clearly see she is here 
is to do the human thing, right, FFG? You know a lot about that with your docs you put down. So sick you support an actual animal abuse because BBJ does not look good at all. Stop holding the cat hostage over your beef, you psycho. How is someone who doesn't like cats going to take care of one? Sick people. And I don't watch that evil witch who looks like Pee-wee's enemy. Someone sent this to me concerned and suggested I call Montreal Animal Control. They will find you as I know your former address. I can't wait for your karma to come. Remember, all of this is happening while Chantal is in Kuwait mourning her stolen cat. Chantal would rage at FFG even more for being a vile human being only existing on YouTube to torment her. There are probably hundreds of rage posts on YouTube about BBJ where she would eventually delete the next day to avoid TOS, I assume. I was able to find another rage post that reads, How is the BBJ situation not theft by deception? What that vile creature did in order to get BBJ away from me is exactly the definition of theft by deception. Taking someone that belongs to someone else by intentionally deceiving them. She literally made up the Amy Flowers story because she knew I say no to giving her the cat and then came to my home and had her brother literally enter my home. All of these lies can be easily proven and already were. I don't need the zombies to believe it. Only the law. I know people are sick of hearing about this, but imagine how you would feel if you had a pet you loved and cared for since 2004, you learned that your stalker and enemy had her, or what whom you thought you were rehoming her to was all a scam and a lie, or that you have no idea where she is or what situation she is in. This has to be illegal and I will not give up. I understand I rehome her, but I was deceived into letting that psycho take her. It all else fails, perhaps at least a wellness check would be done. I am asking for the help of my viewers. If you have any care for BBJ, I can help in any way. Please let me know. Care for BBJ. Demand to see her. Put your hate for me aside and think of the well-being of BBJ. Just because I had to rehome her doesn't mean I didn't love her or care for her for all those years. If I didn't, I would have gotten rid of her a long time ago. I know you are all sick of hearing this, but I am sick and worried about her. If you are tired of me talking about something, just unsubscribe. No one should get to tell me how and when to deal with this issue. I am saying this publicly because maybe someone knows something. Also, if I was guilty of animal abuse or neglect, animal welfare would have removed them. Period. I hope the cops do something about this. And then I sincerely hope you burn in hell. The hate for each other grew so much that... Just recently, Chantel spoke ill of FFG's mom who passed on her community post, RIP, which is an all new low for Chantel. I definitely don't have the screenshot about it, but I'm sure you can find it on Twitter or something, but it was an all new low for Chantel, a vile comment about someone who had passed. Chantel explained how that that was FFG's karma, very modest of her. After Chantal deleted the post, FFG posted a photo of Chantal's biological father with his two children. Obviously, the two children's face were blurred, and FFG had to put a reminder that Chantal's father left her for a reason. FFG also posted this statement. Go nuclear, then delete it like it never happened. Right, Piggy? Yes. These two are completely wild. To cope with her pet's absence in Kuwait, Chantal adopted a hamster with a Salah and eventually adopted a cat named Julia, who people speculated was a stray, but that's a bit nitpicky, so I'll brush it off. In fact, Chantal claimed Salah's friend gave them Julia as a gift when she was a kitten at 5 months old. She also stated Julia was vaccinated when they received her, but it was concluded that Julia was never vaccinated, which sparked more controversy onto Chantel, proving that she is a neglectful pet owner. So, sure enough, the vet's like, yeah, we need to uh, make an appointment. And he's like, actually, first, is she vaccinated? The family we adopted her from said that she was vaccinated. And he's like, well, a lot of people will just tell you that. I know you want a boyfriend, but... We're going to take you to the doctor. <laughs>
Chantal and Salah actually waited until Julia was in heat to get her spayed but was denied by the vet for being unvaccinated. As a result, according to Chantal, Julia would get shots to regulate her heat cycles, but I believe on nothing on getting vaxxed to prevent diseases has been done yet. So seriously, what is up with Chantal and cats? Chantal, after moving to Kuwait, changed her second channel and rebranded as a couple's channel, Salah and Chantal, where they would vlog their adventures together as a married couple. People began to poke fun at Salah for always I fuck himself on camera, but let's be real, we all kind of do it. People started to believe that Salah has zero interest in Chantel. He even got into a mini scandal where a friend of his exposed him. As you can see, the photo is allegedly Salah in a red room, sleeping next to a woman. Therefore, Whenever Salah is not present in Chantal's videos, people would say he's in his red room, joking with the idea that Salah is uninterested. But what do these people know? These two are clearly in love. Yeah, I look better from the front. <laughs> I do get what people are saying though. It's because the two lovebirds lack chemistry on camera, similar to Bibi and Chantal. And Salah's interactions with her are odd, almost as if he needs to flip a switch in order to interact with Chantal. Or it could be the fact that English is not his preferred language and that he hasn't perfect the pitch in some words, which is completely fine, whatever. Overall, the point is, he rather looks at himself in the mirror than look at Chantal. For their couple's channel, Chantal would actually upload vlogs highlighting their dates and adventures around Kuwait, creating a perfect relationship. Even though in the past, she did a live stream insinuating that she had an argument with Salah. She slipped up and revealed that Salah never loved her and continued to cry on live stream helplessly. That live stream was actually swept under the rug because she would continue to narrate them as a loving couple like nothing happened. More power to her though, for keeping things offline, this was when a new influx of reaction channels started to pop off during her Kuwait arc. Even though the Chantal verse has been falling apart, more reaction channels started to bloom to discuss her nasty behavior. Chantal would be upset again at people who would speculate on the negative side of her marriage. Even though she tried so hard to show the positive side, she started to get into drama, her usual, with some reaction channel like FFG of course, and another one who she talks about a lot, Just Breezin, who Chantal, Salah, and other people would call Just Boozing as a way to shame the reaction channel's journey to sobriety. She would also mom shame some of these people during this time period, which is crazy because she's doing all of this as a newlywed, modest person, and as a Muslim woman, according to Chantal. She would get fed up and post this in her community tab as a show of sign that she's done. She posted, It is highly immoral and frowned upon on in Islam to waste your time to those who insult you, so my mistake for my post. I will try not to retaliate against these individuals. Instead, I will allow them to waste their life being vulgar and bad people. I will try to continue to focus on my life and my relationship with God. Guess what she did after that? Yes, Chantal would rage post again, breaking her morals, but not shocking. Salah and Chantal's dynamic is far better than her and Nader, and is a complete 180. In a way, this relationship seems more like what Chantal is used to. Mellow, calm, not much drama, and overall less chaotic, similar to her old life with Bibi. Salah seemed to have influence over Chantal on his views and how to be a proper wife which Chantal tried in the past, but would get baited in rage, showing who she really is and that not being a modest person. Everyone in girl world, including Chantal, thought when moving to Kuwait, there would be less controversy and less drama. All was well when Chantal defended Cyrax, a known creep in Lokal, and tried to relate to him, saying he's a victim of online bullying. Without knowing anything about the infamous Cyrex, her defending him would trigger a new wave of angry mobs online. Chantal's action caused her mom in Canada getting doxxed by trolls. 
Salah's parents would also get the short end of the stick, getting doxxed as well, all because their daughter-in-law was being reckless and a complete menace online. I definitely stayed tuned to this drama the most as it was intriguing to me because of how far and crazy this whole situation went every day. Yes, I listened to everything from trolling Freedy Beauty to the trolling of another nutcase, Missy Moo. <laughs> Chantal would actually rage at the mastermind behind all the trolling, MBM or Music Biz Marty, who she would dox his face on her community tab, calling him vile names, body shaming him, and the usual insults. This caused Chantal to lose thousands of followers after almost reaching 100k. I'm pretty sure she lost around 3,000 people. What happened was people unfollowed Chantal in fear of getting doxxed. She didn't really care about her viewers and supporters and supporters' safety after they rushed for her aid, scared shitless. Chantal actually brushed them off as if they haven't been supporting her financially for the past five years. After that, not much happened when Chantal allegedly filed a report and got authorities involved. The saga was short-lived, yet the wildest thing I've ever seen on YouTube, and I'm gonna say it again, how are these people real? After some talks and to prove the jealous single losers that the couple are truly in love, Chantal took Salah on a couple's trip to Thailand. People speculated that it had to do with her visa, but I'm not really going to go in depth since it's not really my place. They started to vlog their adventures around Bangkok and Pattaya, collecting footage for their couple's channel. The feedback they received on the vlog were negative as expected. Anything she does will always get criticized, and that's just how it is for her, sadly. To me, the vlogs were not as bad as what people made them to be. But I cringed at the vlogs. Aside from going to an unethical zoo, it was actually informative despite Chantal reading off of a Wikipedia page. I mean, I do the same when I do my research. I read notes and quote things from articles, and that's exactly what Chantal did. I have to give it to her. She was educating her audience, and the travel vlogs had effort put into them. I'm a sucker for travel vlogs as it's a good way to learn about other people's cultures. Setting their negative, nasty personality aside, I think Chantal and Salah delivered and showcased the beauty of Thailand pretty okay. Even though Chantal tried to vlog a month's worth of Thailand two weeks into their stay, it ended up being her staying at a hotel room for the rest of the vacation. I guess she did have a reason though, because she suffered from a boil on her leg due to the heat and the mixture of her skin rubbing non-stop while walking. Yes, Thailand is a place where walking by foot is popular, unlike the western world, and that's exactly what Chantal had to do in order to get around. Well, that's actually a lie. There's public transportation she took, like the tuk-tuks and the boats. But overall, she did the damn thing that people were so unsure of, and that being that Chantal was walking. What sucks is that she put so much time into the couple's channel, all for it to get demonetized just recently, this month of November. Or at least that's what the majority of us thought, until Chantal put on her community tab that her and Salah paused the channel's monetization for some unknown reason, which definitely doesn't look sketchy at all. A few weeks after their trip from Thailand, Chantal went on live dressed in red, looking like Doja Cat. Chantal started to rant and made some insensitive comments about the global tragedy that is currently happening. She also started to rage about the same stuff over and over because she doesn't really have anything else to talk about. But I will roll in some clips just to give you guys an idea of this red rage livestream. Do I think the vet lied? How about they take her to the vet now? Like every single thing that's wrong with her is because she's fucking old. Like she has kidney disease and she's like, if you see pictures of her, she's suffering. All for your entertainment, all to piss me off and I'm unaffected. You're not gonna bother me. I've come to terms with what happened, but that doesn't stop me from pointing out your stupid hypocrisy. All right, if you want to suck the dick of somebody who's a dumbass and lying to you, that's your problem, not mine. She looks, she was so bad in your care. Every single picture of her in my care is way better than she looks now. They have no life, they have no life. They provoke you and then when you act ugly back, they're like, Ooh. if I want to defend myself once in a while, I will, whatever. So kiss my ass. Every single thing they predicted and their dumb conspiracies is wrong. Like, it's not worth it. I don't, I don't want to talk about, I don't want these stupid people in my space. I swear, like people, like 2,000 people who are in my chat are over there now because they fucking want me, they want to keep discussing the old miserable me where I was being a 
He's a squealing pig. It's funny that she has the nerve to call anyone a pig. I've never seen someone so ugly inside and outside as her ever in my life. If, number one, she lied to people blatantly, but that's okay, right? That's okay. She has a cat. She's probably mistreating it. It looks starving. I'm actually starving. But the same people just completely ignore that now are giving me so much shit. All of their live streams predicting about how much uh, my husband's going to leave me, blah, blah, blah. There's just, you know, we're being private about that. And I don't want to give content to people hungrily waiting to know everything. You know what I mean? Like, they can all go to hell. I'm not, I'm, I'm keeping that all that private. They can continue to speculate and be wrong. I've never claimed to be an angel or a saint. I mean, obviously, you know, I still have my issues. No one is free from sin. Have you seen some of their criminal records? Look at FFG. She got, like, she was in court for not paying her rent. And she has the nerve to call me broke. Bitch, you wouldn't have a dime if it weren't for me. So shut up and be thankful and kiss my feet. Not long after her red outfit meltdown, Chantal went on life again, bawling her eyes out while drinking Capri Sun and smoking as a coping mechanism. She was talking about her failing relationship with her husband, Salah. Chantal explained how that she's a barren and too old and too fat for Salah and talked about how insecure she is in the relationship. It appeared her midnight thoughts were consuming her and that she couldn't get a good night rest. Plus, since Salah is not emotionally available, she had no choice but to vent online to her viewers and strangers online. It's important to point that this live stream was the most views she garnered on live stream for a very long time. Normally, she would get about 500 at a time in Kuwait, but it looked like 1,000 people were interested in this live stream. Of course, it's because Chantal was crying, being a somewhat wreck again. A bit of a resemblance to the time she was in Cuba. A lot of people wanted the Messier Chantel they got in Canada and that's the closest they will ever get. But I would say the majority do wish Chantel well. At first I felt bad for her because it's clear she's miserable in Kuwait and she has no one to talk to, not even her husband. Plus she's stuck with a person who is not emotionally there for her, which must be super difficult. So my advice for her is to leave Salah and go back to Canada with Pete and be happy. The next day after the breakdown, Chantal started to backtrack on her words defending Salah as if what she said during the breakdown weren't her true feelings. I'm not worried though and you shouldn't either because Salah and Chantal's anniversary happened and they uploaded a anniversary vlog onto the main channel. If you watch it, clearly the two were meant for each other in that they deserve a long, happy, healthy marriage. So stop hating your haters. Also, around this time, Julia may or may not have ringworms. I'm not so sure. Everything is a blur, so that might not even be true. We all strive for success and happiness in life. And I hope to see Chantel not rage so often online and embarrass Salah, her in-laws, and herself. In all seriousness, I hope she recovers financially and mentally. She did it to herself, but it still sucks when someone is that deep in debt and is so miserable about it. I mean, a six-figure debt would be the end of me too. What do you guys think about the glamorous foodie beauty? Is Chantel the worst person on YouTube? I mean... The doxing, racism, raging, stalking, harassing, ableism, animal neglect, and more. Chantal is truly one of a kind. Just remember, don't go out of your way to harass this person and don't go out of your way to bait her. It's best to just sit back and enjoy and that's exactly what I'll be doing after this video. No harassing, no doxing please. Stay safe. Until next time. Peace.